Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to train and publish a model from Code Workspaces. Code Workspaces can be a great tool for training models if you want to use tooling that you're familiar with while still getting to seamlessly deploy your model into the Foundry environment. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. So here we are in Foundry. I'm already in a project. I'm in my learning project. And I've already created a folder with some subfolders, code, data, and models, to separate out the resources that I'm going to be using and creating in this tutorial. So first, I'm going to start with data. And so I'm going to navigate to my data folder. Hit new, upload files. I'm going to choose from my computer and grab my generated demand data. Upload as a structured data set. So let's click into this data set and check it out. So this is a totally synthetic notional data set that I generated. So we've got a date, a product ID, product category, base price. This is meant to simulate some sort of demand forecasting scenario. And so we also have a couple of other features, uh, discount percent, ad spend social, ad spend email, and a couple of others. Now you'll see here that we have a couple of autoregressive features because again, this is a forecasting problem. And now you'll also see here that we have this data split column. So the reason for that is that, again, because this is a forecasting problem, we can't really just do a random train test split because then we might be leaking data from the future into the training set and we can't have that. And so here what it's doing is it's designating days after a certain cutoff to be part of the test set. Now you'll see here that we also have this seasonality index. So it's essentially just a way to numerically represent how demand naturally goes up and down throughout the year, which is gonna help the model recognize and predict these sorts of patterns. And so there's various ways to derive this seasonality index. And so this is the data in a normal circumstance, you'd probably do a hefty amount of data exploration before you actually get into the modeling, but we're going to jump right into the model building. So from here, I'm going to navigate back to my folder where I'm doing my work, and I'm going to navigate to code. And so now from here, I'm going to hit new, and I'm going to search for Jupyter Workspace. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this Demand Forecasting Model Training. Now note that you can configure some advanced settings here. Like for example, you can raise the idle timeout to say an hour or six hours. You can also add some network policies or throw more compute resources at the workspace. Now we're gonna hit continue and then hit create. And now the workspace is being created. And so now from here, I'm gonna be making a new notebook. I click on that. And I'm going to call this one model training. So now in order to train a model, I of course need to import my data set. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to data sets over here. Hit add data. Read existing data sets. And I'm going to choose that data set that I just uploaded. So now I'm going to hit select. And so now I'm going to change the alias. I'm going to get rid of that three, and then I'm going to hit add data set. And so now here, I'm going to copy that code snippet, which is going to allow me to import that data set into my environment. And now I'm going to have to install some libraries. So I'm going to navigate to over here to libraries, and I'm going to need scikit-learn. And so I'm going to hit latest to run the install command. And then I'm also going to grab Palantir models, serializers. Now, I'm going to need the Palantir models package too, but installing this one will also install the Palantir models package because that is a dependency. And so we're going to give those a second to finish installing, and then we're going to go right up our model. All right, and now our packages have been installed, so let's get to coding. So here, I'm going to paste in some packages that I'm going to need. And so here, I have pandas, of course, numpy. Didn't have to install those. Those come with. And here you'll see I have some model selection libraries, ensemble pre-processing, compose, pipeline, metrics, impute. I'll be needing all of these in my process. Now, next up, 
I'm not going to be using all the features from the data set. Now, in a production scenario, of course, you'd want to do some sort of robust feature selection. But in this case, I chose a selection of features, and we're going to be using those for simplicity. So here I have my numeric features and my categorical features. And so here we're sticking with base price, discount percentage, competitor price, stock level, seasonality index, ad spend social, ad spend email, and a couple of autoregressive features. These are my lag features, which show us the demand from one week before and from two weeks before. And so here are my categorical features. I have the product category. I have, is it Black Friday? And was this features on the homepage? So next up, I'm going to have to prepare the data. So I'm going to paste in some code and then explain what it does. So you'll see here that I have my X matrix, so which is going to be the numeric features and the categorical features. The Y is going to be demand. And now again, we're not doing a random train test split here because for a forecasting problem, you just don't want to do that. And so here we're doing a split using that split column that I already defined in my data. And so if you're doing a similar implementation, you're going to want to do some sort of split on date, not a random split. Now next up, I'm going to start defining my pipeline. So here I'm using pipeline chaining to create a model so that when I call this model, all the pre-processing stats, the one hot encoding whatnot, is going to happen when that model gets called. And so you'll see here that I have my numeric transformer. For the imputer, I was struggling with some outliers, and so I'm using the median as an imputation strategy and using robust scalar instead of standard scalar. So that's my numeric processor. Now I have the preprocessor, which strings together that numeric transformer that I just defined and my one hot encoder for the categorical features. Next up, I'm setting up my param grid for my grid search, which I do down here. But first, I have to define my pipeline, and my pipeline chains together the preprocessing steps with the regressor, which in this case is going to be a gradient boosting regressor. And of course, random state set to 42. Next up, I have my grid search to optimize some hyperparameters. And then finally, we fit the model with cross-validation. And now that the model's been fit, I'm going to select the best model and then make some predictions and evaluate the performance of the model. And now before I run this, take note that this entire chunk of code expects a data frame called a DF. And my current data frame is not called DF, so I'm going to rename it. And so now I'm going to run everything from scratch. Now here, we can see that the model is going through its fitting process. And so now we can see that we have a result that we have an R squared of 0.96, which is very good. And so we're ready to move on now. So now that we have a trained model, these are all steps that you might have taken before, maybe on your local machine. Now is the part where we're going to publish the model into Foundry so we can do things like wrap it in a function and deploy it in workshop or say, submit it to a modeling objective. And so now, next up, we're going to navigate to this models tab over here. And so from here, you're going to hit add model, create new model. And I'm going to call this one demand forecast. Now I did make a special folder for it, so I'm going to go save it in my models folder. And so now I'm going to hit save. And now here, I'm going to hit Create. When you see this, just hit Add Package. So now you'll see this toast that we got a generated model adapter file, which is called Demand Forecast Adapter. So if I click into it, I can see that we have been given a skeleton of an adapter. So the role of this adapter is to essentially instruct Foundry how to load and serialize this model. You can think of the model adapter like an API definition of the model. So how do you load it? What inputs does it take? What outputs does it produce? Now, I already have an adapter written that I'm going to paste in. So I'm going to paste it in, and then I'm going to explain the different parts of it. So I'm going to delete everything and paste mine in. So you can see here that same as the last one, you have the instructions for loading the model. We also have them imports here, so that's why we needed the Palantir models and also the serializers. 
And so here, this is a class definition. So the class is called Demand Forecast Adapter. And so here, we're defining the inputs that the model requires and also its outputs. So you can see these are all the columns that it's taking in. So you might recognize these from our model definition. And this is our predict method. And so that's the adapter. We're going to go back to our model training file. And now you'll see here that we are given a code snippet. And so this code snippet is used to wrap your model in the adapter and publish it to Foundry. So you can copy that code snippet. And now in another cell, I'm going to paste that code snippet. So you can see it's importing model output. It's also importing our adapter. So be careful that your file name matches the one that it's expecting to find here. And also make sure that your class name is the same as this one. So the class here is demand forecast adapter. So the class here is demand forecast adapter. And the class here is also a demand forecast adapter. So first of all, we're wrapping the model in the adapter. Problem here is that your model is not called some trained model. Your model is called best model. And so we're going to delete that and replace it with best model. If you tried to run it as is, you would have gotten an error that said some trained model is not found. And so here, we wrap the model in our adapter. And now here, we're grabbing the model output, so this guy here by its alias, saving it as model output, and then we are publishing our wrapped model to that model output. And so here, I can hit Shift-Enter to run. And now if you keep this loading bar here, it means things are going well. So here, we can see that we have our published model. And you'll notice here that we have these inputs and these outputs. And those are defined, again, by the adapter. So now, technically, your model is ready to use. Now, you also could publish it as a transform output here. And that would be for if you wanted to have your model build on a schedule. So now let's click on demand forecast and we can check out what our model actually looks like. And so here you'll see that we have our model. It was rebuilt just now. And now if you want to start a deployment, so, you know, say to use it in workshop or whatnot, you could hit start deployment and then hit start. And so now we can see that our deployment is running, and that means it's ready to go use in some sort of user-facing application like Workshop. Just remember to first wrap it in a function over here. If you want to see what your model does when all the inputs are zero, then you can hit Run. Now, this can just be a good sanity check to make sure that your model works as expected. And that's it. So in summary, we trained a model in code workspaces using notional synthetic data did a little bit of evaluation here, and then published it into Foundry. And then the model is ready to use. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.